amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? The love of God is amazing and so wonderful that it is beyond human love. It is rich and full of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Hello, I'm Rudy Rodell, welcoming you to this broadcast. We want to thank all of you who have sent us an email or made comments on our webpage. Go to www.radioeden.com. There you will find a link to my website and my email as well. We would like to hear from you and are looking forward to your comments. We have received many comments from many people and we are really grateful for them. Each month we will talk about a topic or a theme. In this way we will get an in-depth insight into this particular Bible study. All Bible citations are from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. This is the month of December, the Christmas month. People decorating the homes and trim the trees. Everything has to be beautiful. There is a hustle and bustle around the house, and people hardly have time for one another. For the church, this, too, is one of the busiest time of the year. The choirs are practicing for the Christmas cantata, and there are every week all sorts of Christmas parties. But what does all of it has to do with Christmas? Each family has their own traditions. In my family, Christmas was more a time to reflect, a time where we talk much about Jesus and his love, his coming, and his kindness. After all, the feast is about Jesus. It's all about Jesus and not about us. Or isn't it? God gave his Son. His birth was a very humble, very lowly, but also very joyous event. Eight hundred years earlier, the great prophet Isaiah received word from God to give to give to Ahaz, the king of Judah, a sign. Ahaz was afraid because the enemy was about to enter Judah. The Lord encouraged King Ahaz to ask for a sign, but he was afraid and didn't want to test God. Then Isaiah said to Ahaz in chapter 7, verses 10 through 14, Then the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God, from the depths of Sheol to the heights of heaven. But Ahaz replied, I will not ask, I will not test the Lord. Isaiah said, Listen, house of David, is it not enough for you to try the patient of men? Will you also try the patient of my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive, have a son, and name him Emmanuel. Whenever God gives a sign or a promise, it will be fulfilled at the proper time in the providence of God. Emmanuel means God with us. It means God will walk on earth and meet the people face to face. Never before has a prophecy had such an impact on humankind. God is going to be with us, walking with us, and we could actually see Him and talk to Him. What a wonderful thing this would be! The next question, why? 
Why would God come to this earth? Because he loves us and cares for us? Yes, and he wants to demonstrate his love to us. What kind of love would this be? It would be a love that will bear our sins. And God would experience death, the death on the cross. He did this suffering in the body of a man, in order that the pain would be real of that of a man. He had to feel the complete agony of one condemned to death. This is what true love is made of. This lover, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, of the Son of the living God, was born that night in Bethlehem. Jesus, lover of our souls, a Savior, a Redeemer, and the Holy One of Israel, was born that night. Joseph, the husband of Mary, received word from the Lord in a dream. We read in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. The birth of, the birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Though her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now, all this took place to fulfill which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. When Joseph got up from sleeping, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. He married her, but did not know her in intimately until she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. Joseph was perplexed. When God speaks to us, it doesn't come to us with a big, loud announcement, but rather in a quiet voice in privacy or in a dream. So it was here. We will always know when God talks to us. Joseph took Mary to be his wife, but did not have any physical relationship with her. God has a plan for all of us. He knows when we are being born. He knows our weakness. He knows how we are going to live our life and he chooses his men and women according to his wisdom and grace. Like in the case of the great prophet Jeremiah, God spoke to him in chapter 1, verses 4 through 5. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, I chose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. 
In the same way, he chose Mary to be the mother of his son, Jesus Christ. Mary was set apart to fulfill the prophecy that Isaiah gave about 800 years before it came to pass. Then the question may arise, since God, since when did God choose each one of us? Paul explained this in a letter to the Ephesians in chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be, to be adopted through Jesus Christ for himself according to his favor and will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he favored with us in the Beloved. God is choosing us according to what? He predestined us? Well, actually, it is his pre-knowledge. In other words, he knows the beginning and the end based on how we would live our life, receive or reject him as our Savior. He knew ahead of time the type of person we would be even though each one of us has, some, has the same opportunity to get to know him. By no means did he arbitrarily choose us. Therefore, we definitely can say that Mary was an unusual woman. She was pure, dedicated to the Lord. Both Mary and Joseph's genealogical line went back to David. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter one, traces his genealogy back to David through King Solomon. The line of Mary also goes through David, however, through Nathan, his son. There are no accidental accidental chance it when it comes to genealogical lines. Everything is recorded in the Bible and recorded in heaven as well. Even though we don't know our own genealogical line all the way back a thousand years or more, God knows everything and wants to make us part of the heavenly line through his Son, Jesus Christ. Many of us want to know who our ancestors were. Many societies have many, uh, many societies have a task to research this to tell us who our ancestors were. As important as this may be uh, for some of us, more important is the fact to become a member of the eternal line, the line of our Lord Jesus Christ. What about you? God desires to have you do, to become part of his line. All you have to do is to trust him and believe in him, knowing that he is the only one that can forgive your sins and give you the liberty from the devil. Call on him right now in this very moment. And looking at the clock, it is the second speeding and it tells me this is it for today. Looking forward to talk to you some more next Sunday right here at the same time as we continuing this topic. I wish you a great